Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. Would you join us in singing? We've come into this house. you in spirit and truth we thank you lord for all that you have done for us to get us here lord 
Help us, Heavenly Father, to focus on you today. I pray that you would bless Bishop, that you would bless the words of his mouth, Lord. Let praises flow from his mouth. Give him preaching power. Give him conviction and clarity of speech, Lord. Let us, Lord, be changed today as we leave this place, that we will not leave the same. As we focus on evangelism, Lord, let us spread the gospel, the good news, that Jesus Christ is real, that Jesus Christ is coming back, and let us pour out compassion on our neighborhoods and communities, and let them remember you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We welcome you all to Christ's temple. You may be seated. We are a Christ-centered church connecting people to Jesus Christ and to one another, and we are delighted that we are connecting with you today. And so we pray that as you are in this house of worship, uh, that you make yourself comfortable, but not too comfortable to where you don't um, praise the Lord. So remember to praise the Lord in this place. Um, we are grateful that you are here with us today. And at this time, Bishop will come forward with our morning announcement. to her and her family. I understand that during the past week we've had several birthdays. Unfortunately, the persons who have had the birthdays are not here today, but we still want to give them a shout out this morning. Uh, Sister Mary Harris on August the 11th and Sister Dora Smith on August the 12th. Uh, we wish them a very, very blessed, belated birthday. As we think about... Um, Oh, let me acknowledge uh, Kurt and, uh, Mar I don't see Marie here, but Kurt is here. He and Marie have been away for a week or so, and uh, they've been busy with bringing grandchildren into the world, and I understand that they have had the privilege of bringing in both a boy and a girl, right? Yeah. Both a boy and a girl. Amen. Amen. For those who may be looking for some employment in the church announcements that we sent out during the week, uh, there is some hiring going on here in the LA area, uh, some green job training, and if you're interested in green job training, all you need to do is have a conversation with Daniel. He can tell you all about that. They also are receiving applications to become a bus operator for the metro system here in Los Angeles County. If you'd like more information, I'll be glad to share that with you if you did not uh, get that through your email. Again, I want to remind those of you who give your tithes and offering electronically, you can now do it through Zelle by using the Christ Temple LA at Gmail email address. If you use that, uh, Christ Temple should pop up in whatever Zelle you are using, whatever bank you are using, and you can give your tithes and offering through that. On this coming Saturday, uh, August the 20th at 8.30, there will be a post-convention meeting. It will be conducted over Zoom, so you are familiar with the numbers that we typically use on Wednesday evening. At 8.30, there will be a district um, post-convention meeting over or via Zoom, and then at 9.45, that will transition into a diocese meeting. 8.30 will be the district led by uh, Pastor Harper. At 9.45, we will transition into about a 45-minute diocese meeting over Zoom. We invite you to come and be a part of that special meeting. And then on August 31st at 6.30, August 31st at 6.30, we will be having a special church meeting via Zoom. That's a Wednesday evening. Typically, that had been our Sunday school Bible study 
uh, time on Wednesday evening. We will have a special church meeting August the 31st at 6.30 p.m. Now, Sister Mary is going to come back and continue to uh, lead us as we worship the Lord by singing together. Amen. Amen. Would you stand and join us in singing Victory in Jesus? And we'll do all three verses. No. 
How many of you know that we have victory in Jesus? Amen. 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 Now, I've watched sports and other events, and typically when people have won and have become victorious, they celebrate just a little bit differently. So, how many of you know that we have victory in Jesus? We serve an amazing God. Now, of course, for you all who have come to Christ Temple before, you know I'm up here to read scripture, but I've got some business to tend to before we read scripture. How many of you have a cell phone? Don't be shy. You can take out your cell phone in church. So take out your cell phone. It's really quick. Really quick. Now, we are, as I mentioned before, we are a Christ-centered church, and we are connecting people to Jesus and to one another. Um, but we don't take those connections for granted, and we want to stay connected with you all. Now, we do have some of you all's information, um, but just to make certain that we have updated information, and for the visitors, we have your information, we just want you to do us a very quick favor. Um, if you can do it now, great. Um, later is fine, too, but if you can do it now, that's great. And for those of you who are tuning in virtually as well, need you to do me a favor. Need you to text CTCLA to this number, to 84576. If you text CTCLA to 84576, it's going to give you a link. And when you get that link, it's going to ask for your first name, your last name, your social security number, and all of your banking information. <laughs> it's going to ask. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's going to ask for your first name, last name. Um, it's going to ask for your email address, um, your birthday, so that we can remember when your birthday is. And, a lot of other cool stuff. That way we can stay in contact with you all. And whenever there's events or happenings at Christ Temple, you all will be in the know and will receive that information via email um, and text. Now, if you are, you know, traditional and you're like, I'm not doing this on my cell phone. We got a friendly notepad right here. And after service, I will be around and you can provide your first name, your last name, your email address and your phone number and we will enter that information in manually, all right? So either way, we would love to stay connected, amen? Amen. All right, thank you all. All right, so now I'll give you all about five more seconds and then we'll read the scripture. Um, and for those of you who are done, um, the scripture So uh, the phone number, so just like you're texting um, someone, you'll enter in the phone number, which is 84576. So that's just a, a short phone number, not seven digits, but just five. And then once you enter in that 84576 phone number, then you'll type in CTCLA. Thank you. So when you type that, thank you, Bishop, it'll say, thanks for connecting with Christ Temple Church. Click to complete sign up, and then there'll be a hyperlink. You just click on that, and then it says, I'll reply with the email. And then once you finish that process, it'll say, thanks for becoming a part of the Christ Temple Church community. That means you're official once you get that message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. All right. Thank you all for your cooperation. And now... Um, as we remain standing, our scripture is coming from Hebrews 11, and we'll read verses 8 through 16. Hebrews 11, verses 8 through 16. And if you're still entering in your information, um, and you're trying to decide whether you need to go to the scripture on your phone, we got it right here on the monitor, so you can kind of multitask just this time. And it reads... By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. 
By faith he dwelled in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one man and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, but he has prepared a city for them. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 16. May God add a blessing to the hearer, reader, and the doer of his holy word. You may be seated. Thank you all. Would you join us in singing, Who Was It? Page 438 in your hymnal, or it should be on the screen. If you feel like standing, we welcome you to stand with us.
who follows him shall not walk in darkness. Amen. He is the light of the world, and he that follows him shall not walk in darkness. Amen. Amen. And Lorraine, that's a good thing to clap for. Amen. That's a, that's a good point. Amen. 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 We all know that this afternoon at 3.30, we'll be celebrating the birthday of Sister Ann Guarez, uh, uh, who turns 108. And so there will be a big uh, celebration here this afternoon. And we look forward to your presence. There will be... Uh, uh, many members of her family who will be here and other friends and guests will be here this afternoon. And I think they also will be serving a meal today. So that's at 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, please, please, please make sure that Daniel gets your email address. We want to communicate a little better. And if you would make sure that he gets your email address, you will help us with that. Let me invite your attention this morning to back to the book of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews is for the rear of the uh, New Testament. And um, I'm before 1st, 2nd Peter, uh, John, Jude, and Revelation. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, John, Jude, Revelation. Um, but I want you to come to chapter 11 once again. And I'm going to start reading at verse 29. And it should be up on the screen if you... Um, want to follow along from the monitors. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown and sundered. Uh, they were, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, and all of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And then we're going to cross over into chapter 12 and just read two verses. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Faith on fire. Faith on fire. Faith is one of those things that will not only take you a long way, but faith will take you from earth to glory. And therefore, it would be good if we had faith on fire in our hearts and in our lives. We have, as I have been saying very recently, we have a world on fire and we need a church on fire. We have a world on fire. And we need 
our church on fire. Faith on fire. On Thursday evening of this past week, Pearl and I were sitting down watching the afternoon news, and one of the very leading stories was talking about the monstrous fires in Europe, particularly in southern France. A lot of southern France is on fire, and fires have been burning out of control. Hundreds of buildings have been destroyed. Thousands of acres have been burned. It's been called a heat apocalypse. And that's a word, big 50 cent word, that's associated with the end of times. When we think about apocalypse, we think about the final catastrophic destruction of the world and everything within. And as I sat there with pearls watching the, the pictures of the fires burning out of control, just observing all of the destruction, all of the uh, destruction that was taking place there in Europe, reading also about the, or hearing also about the drought that's now in, in, uh, in England, the nuclear power point that so plant that so many are concerned about in the U Ukraine that could lead could explode and lead to a nuclear catastrophe. I begin to ask myself, are we watching the beginning of the end? So much seems to be happening in our world. We have a world on fire. And therefore, we need a church on fire. And we need to be people who have faith on fire. I sat there thinking, you know, it's good to be a person of faith. It's good to be a person of faith because somehow, some way, people of faith know that God has it all under control. I've sat there thinking to myself about my wife trying to get back on her feet and thinking about some other family challenges that we are facing that give me some pause and kind of disturb the peace of my heart because I don't see the way through. All I see are trials and tribulation and troubles, but you know, faith will carry us through. Amen. And faith is that confidence, that trust in God. Yes. And so as I begin to think through all these things, I said, you know, this has been a good week to be reminded of people who had confidence in God, and that's what we see in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the hall of faith because it lifts up many of the Old Testament saints and all of them had their share of trouble. We look at them now standing afar off and we see these Old Testament saints, Abraham and and uh, Enoch and um, Noah, we see them as larger than life figures, but every one of them had their share of troubles. They all went through something, and the main message of Hebrews chapter 11, as it talks about things that happened in the ancient times, the miracles that were uh, done, it, and it's a good place, if you need a miracle, a good place to go and park is in Hebrews chapter 11 because it reminds us of the mighty power of our God. But the main message of Hebrews chapter 11 is trust in God. If God said it, that settles it. Now, they used to say, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But no, if God said it, that settles it whether you believe it or not. It's settled whether you accept it, whether you get on board, whether you buy into it, whether you support it, whether you think it's a good idea. If God said it, that is sufficient. And you can go to the bank if God had said it. But said it because God is not like man. The Bible says that he cannot lie. Every now and then we get a phone call from a dear sister in Arkansas and she will call to pray for Pearl and I and she says, I just want you to know God's got it. 
I just want you to know. And she speaks very, very rapidly. And she tells us that several times during the course of the conversation. I just called Bishop. I just want Sister Lindsay to know. I just want her to know that God's got her. You know, I think that's a good thing to know in times like these, to know that God has it. With all that we are seeing as we hear from the media, we are hearing about the fires, the storms, the heat, the political upheaval, polio. Who ever thought that polio would be back in the news again? COVID still alive and well. Monkeypox, the extreme drought here even in California. It's good to know that in the midst of it all, God's got it. And I know that I think I'm probably around people, and as I walk through the streets of L.A., there's a bunch of people about to lose it because there's so much in the air. There's so much to stress us out, to cause us to live on edge. I was reading the other day about you really need to be careful how you approach people because people are caring so much these days, and everyone just takes a, a little bit to, uh, to get them to go off on you because they are so close to the margin. But it's good in times like these to know God's got it. And the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 26 and 3, He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him because He's trusting in Him. I just have this confidence, even though the world is on fire, God's got it. Let's see what these folk in, he in Hebrews chapter 11 learned as they went through their seasons of trial and seasons of difficulty. Hebrews chapter 11 opens with a verse that, you know, you just kind of love to hear quoted if you've been around the church any length of time. And it's a verse that people are familiar with. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then if you were to ask somebody, well, what does that mean? I don't know, but it certainly sounds good. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, here's what it means. Faith is the assurance of things Hope for. Faith is the conviction that even though I do not see it, I still have a certainty and a conviction in my heart that it's true because God has established it, because God has said it. It's really a, a place to stand on these two words. I have an assurance. And I have a certainty, but I have a conviction. I have a no so. I just know that I know that I know because God has said it. Faith is that rock-solid conviction whereby I go to the bank on what God has said because I believe God and I know that God never fails. We make promises. We fail to keep them. We fail to live up to them. We can have confidence, though, that when God makes a promise, our God never fails. Amen. Prophets and preachers and deacons and parents and partners, they may fail. They may disappoint us. They may let us down. But God never fails. And through faith, we're able to be overcomers. That's what the Bible story is all about. And I don't know where you're standing this morning, but I'm standing on the promises of God. People like Abraham got a word from God, and God said to Father Abraham that he was to go out. And he did not tell Abraham where he was going. But Abraham, by faith, by his conviction on, and on God, he went out not knowing where he was going because God had promised him a land. And the Bible says that he went to the land that God had promised him. And when he got to that land, even though God said, I'm going to give this land to you and to your seed. 
Abraham never ever built a solid structure on that land. He lived in tents. And tents are temporary. Abraham would not see the fruition or the reality of the promise of God, but he went by faith because God said it. That was enough for Abraham. If God said it, he'd go out not knowing where he was going because he believed that the God of heaven and earth, if he made a promise, he would not fail. The Bible says that Abraham did this. He did it because beyond the land, Abraham was looking for a mother city. He was looking for a city whose foundation and builder is God. He left his home in obedience to God because of this future hope. He had the hope of heaven in his heart. And he realized as he lived here on earth, he was just passing through. All of this that we see, feel, touch, taste is temporary. And he went on the promises of God because he believed that by faith he could depend upon the word of God to give him a land for him and his heritage because he was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. I wonder, what are you looking for this morning? Is there a hope of heaven in your heart? This world is okay for the most part. There's a whole lot here to enjoy, but it ain't heaven. I wonder if you are looking for that city whose builder and maker is God, because if you are looking for that city whose builder and maker is God, it changes your priorities down here. It changes the focus and the direction of your life if you have heaven as your goal because you realize that the stuff here, this earth stuff, is temporary stuff. All this stuff that so many people give their lives to. I mean, literally wear themselves down to the bone over clothes and food and houses and possessions. But it's all temporary stuff. It's all stuff that's here today and gone tomorrow. It's all stuff that you're either going to leave it or it's going to leave you. You can wear yourself out looking for this world, but the Bible would encourage us to wear this world like a loose garment. Yes, you appreciate the blessings of life. Yes, you appreciate all the good things that God has allowed you to enjoy, but you realize that this old world ain't your home. You are just passing through. And because Abraham had that conviction, he was willing to step out on the promises of God because this world is not was not his home. Do you have that in your heart this morning? I am here today, but soon and very soon, I'll be gone. And do you really want to live for stuff as opposed to living for the God of heaven and earth who has an eternal home that he would love to welcome you into. He wants you to have not only life here, but he wants to give you a life beyond this old world. What's the focus? Verse 13 in chapter 11 says, these all died in the faith. Um, I don't have any idea as I stand here this morning where I'm going to die. My daughter told me this day, she said, Daddy, you're going to end up dying right there in that church behind the pulpit. I don't know if that's going to be true. I, I'd prefer not. I don't know if I'll die in L.A. I don't know if I'll be in Kansas City where I grew up. I don't know if I'll be in Chicago where some of my children are. But one thing I do know, is that wherever I die, I want to die in the faith. 
That's the most important thing, is to buy in the faith, to die standing on the promises of God, to die believing in the Lord God Almighty, dying believing that God has something better than this world. This world is okay again, but God has something better. And that's one of the themes in the book of Hebrews. Over and over again, the writer of Hebrews comes back to say that this is better. Yes, this is here, but God has something better. And you know what most of us want? Most of us want the best. Well, if you want the best, you better go with God. He said they did not receive all, the prom all that God had for them, but they saw it from afar. In other words, they saw it by faith. They saw themselves as strangers and pilgrims down here, they realize this is temporary. I'm passing through. And therefore, they had their focus on another place, a better place. And it says because their focus was on that another place, that better place, God is not ashamed to be their God. God will own them because God knows where their heart is. They have a heart that's after God, and he has prepared a city for them. I suppose there are those who are here this morning that love all those home repair shows. I'm married to a person who does. She can just spend hour after hour looking at the fix-ups and, and how they take this old run-down raggedy building home and turn it around. And I must admit, I, I've gotten a little interested in it myself. I said, wow, you know, they're... They've done some amazing things with some of these homes that you see. And I find myself saying, you know, it might be nice to move and to live there in Laurel, Mississippi, or someplace else where they're making a great difference. But anything made by man, no matter how well they build it up, eventually it's going to fall down again. What I'm really looking for is that city. What Paul writes about in 2 Corinthians, we have another building, a building not made with hands because we know that this earthly building, this earthly tabernacle, it doesn't make any difference what you do. It's going to fail. I don't care how careful you are, how many vitamins you take, how many miles you run. Uh, while my son was here a few weeks ago, my son went up to Ventura and he ran in a marathon 26 miles. And, you know, for the life of me, I, I just tell you, saints, for the life of me, if you can explain to me why you'd like to run 26 miles, Please come and explain it to me because I just don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I, and I believe in physical issues. I walk every day, get up very early and walk every day. But after you've done all that you can do, this old building, as the old folk used to say, is going to have a leak in it and you're going to have to move one day. You need to have that building, have that assurance that I have a building not made with hands, a house eternal in the heavens, and that's the focus of my life. I want to see my Lord. The writer of the Hebrew says this is what motivates. This is the many things are, have been done in the Hebrews chapter 11, and he gives us a list of those things uh, things that were done simply by faith. Uh, you see, not only do we have a heavenly home to look forward to, but praise be to God. Some people say, you know, y'all just after pie in the sky. No, we're not just after pie in the sky, but I praise God that we have some help right here and now. We have one who's acquainted with all of our trials, all of our temptations. We have a God who's been there, done that, who's been tempted in all points like as we are, and yet he did not compromise. And we have some help right here in this world. We have a God who by faith works miracles. The writer to Hebrews says that the people of Israel as they were leaving the land of Egypt, they had the Egyptians behind them. 
They had the Red Sea before them. They had mountains on either side. As they made their way forward by faith in God, what would they do? The Bible says that faith in God caused the Red Sea to roll back and they walked through on dry land. The unbelieving Egyptians tried to follow them, but they all drowned. But God made a way for his people because he's an on-time God. He knows when to show up. And somebody said that when he shows up, he knows how to show out because he's God all by himself. And he has all the elements under his control. He is indeed a mighty God. Not only will he give you the assurance of a home in heaven, but he'll give you some help right here in the then and now. Children of Israel, going into the land of promise, there is that walled up city, Jericho, and God gives strange directions. He says, I want you to march around the city every day. I want you to march around it. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around this great walled up city called Jericho seven times. And on that seventh time, I want you to blow your trumpets. And I want you to make a great shout. And the Bible says that the walls fell down. How did it happen? By faith. By faith in God. The walls of Jericho fell before the people of God. And I need to ask you this morning. I don't live at your address. But if you live where I live. There's some walls that you need to fall down in your life. Sometimes there are walls of doubt. And fear. And sin. And unbelief. And sometimes there are habits that control us instead of controlling them. But our God is able to bring down the walls. He's a God, if I believe, he will make a way out of no way. I dare you to try him this morning because he's an on-time God. It was Rahab the prostitute who did not die when the uh, spies came in to spy out the land because Rahab, by faith, believed God. She heard the report that the people of God, that nation Israel, these are God's special chosen people. They're on their way to occupy this land. And the Bible says that when the spies came to spy out the land, instead of her going to the king and revealing their presence, instead she hid them because she believed God. She believed that God had given the nation of Israel to the, given them the land and, and that they were on borrowed time. And so because she believed God, she and all of her household were spared. She was Rahab the prostitute. You know, even if a prostitute will believe God, God will do some amazing things because he's that kind of a God. She welcomed them, she received them, and the Bible says time would fail to tell of all that was done by faith. All those Old Testament stories of what Gideon and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, so many others, they believed God in spite of their circumstances. They believed that they could stand on the promises of God. They believed that through trials and tribulation and trouble that God never fails. It may be dark today where you live. And you may be going through something today. But I dare you to stand and hold on to the promise that weeping may endure for the night. But joy shall come in the morning. I dare you to hold on to the promise that soon and very soon, you may not get all that you want here in this life, all that you think that you are due, but I do say this, in Christ, you get it all. You'll get it all on that final day when you realize the song we used to sing, it will be worth it all. You'll get it all on that day when our Lord comes to redeem and to claim the righteous 
And he was saying to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Come on up higher. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Here is what. Here is what the writer of Hebrews says. Since we have a God who responds to faith, people who believe, who trust him, who just know, but they know that they know that God's going to make a way. He says, therefore, we should do something. He says, therefore, since we have this great promise, he says that we ought to lay aside, since we are, we are surrounded by this great cloud, and the King James said that we are compassed about. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. It's kind of like uh, being in an athletic stadium and the stands are filled with all of those who have gone before us. Perhaps your mother. Perhaps your father. Perhaps others who come along that you've had confidence in and You've watched their lives as they have lived for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're all in the stands. And they're in the stands and they're watching as we run the race. But they're in the stands even more. And I think about how just recently Brother Hayes joined those that were in the stands. And they had a dear sister, Ernestine Smith, just a couple days ago, 94 years old, and uh, faithful, faithful saint of God in our sister church in Chicago has joined those who are in the stands. And because they have all of these who are in the stands, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, Samson, Isaiah, all the prophets, Paul and Peter and Matthew and John and James, all are in the stands. What are their lives saying? What is their witness? Their witness is to say to you and to me, you can make it. God is faithful. He will bring you through. I have one thing I can say to anybody now that my hair is a little grayer. And now that I've passed 70 years of age, I can say to anybody coming along, I used to talk about how that God will make a way and I was 25 and 35 and I was largely was saying what other folks said and I was saying what my grandmother told me. But I can tell you for myself that God will make a way, that God will open the door. And we all are encouraged when we look into the stands and see those who have gone before us whose lives bear witness that God is faithful. God is faithful. And he says, in light of the faithfulness of God and because he's faithful, he says, here's what we ought to do. Let's lay aside every weight. You know, you got sometimes you got some mess in your life that's just kind of hanging on to your life. It may not necessarily be sin, but it ain't helping you either. You know, it, it, it's just maybe sometimes it's a friendship or a relationship, or maybe we're watching too much television, or, or, or we're indulging in something else. It may not necessarily be, it's not a heaven or hell issue type thing, but it's just kind of a weight. And it just hinders and slows you down. You know, there, there are some things that I say that it may not be anything wrong with them in and of themselves, but they can have a way of taking the spiritual edge off of your life. You know, they, they have a way of dulling your appetite for the thing. You watch, people don't watch enough TV. I, I, I've said if you watch too much TV, you might find yourself cussing because they cuss a whole lot on TV these days. And you get garbage in what you're going to have, you're going to have garbage out. You get enough garbage in, you're going to get some garbage out. The writer to the Hebrews says, in light of faith, in light of who our God is and all that he can do, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. If you've got sin in your life, it's time to lay it down. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to take it. I don't care how important it might be to you. You just say, Lord, I'm through with this by faith. I'm through with this. I'm just trusting you to help me, Lord, to put this aside so that I can run it 
with endurance so that I'm not weighed down. One of the things I noticed that when my son ran those 26 miles, he didn't take a suitcase with him. Amen. You don't weigh, you don't carry. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the Bible is, was written, the way they ran the races in that day, they ran them in the nude. They were men running, and they ran them in the nude for the by and large. They wanted nothing to hinder them. They laid aside every weight and every sin. You got some weight? You're still trying to mess around with this and hold on to that? He says, lay aside and keep your eyes on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Well, I know some of you got your eyes on me. But what you going to do when I let you down? Or if I do something you don't like? Well, you know, I just think if he was all of that, he wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have said that. He should have known better than that. He's been around here forever. <laughs> and so when you get mad at me, there you go off. Say, don't look at the pastor. Don't look at the bishop. Don't look at the mother in Zion. Sister Crude may be good as gold. Don't look at Sister Crude. <laughs> don't look at Sister Crude. Good as gold. Associate pastor here at the church. Don't look at Sister Crude. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because I tell you, if you look to Jesus, you'll never be disappointed. And he will never, ever fail. You know, that's one of the things I like about Jesus. You know, maybe you went through something and perhaps I should have been there or... Uh, or because I could have been going through something the same time you was going through something, and I was doing all, all I could to hold it together for myself. But maybe you just felt like you just, you know, Pastor, you just should have been there. I don't know where you were. But people, we, we just, best we can, but we still disappoint each other. But if you look unto Jesus, you'll never be disappointed. And he's always on time. He knows how to show up. And he knows how to make a way. He knows how to open a door. He knows how to bless you. He knows how to do things in your life that you can't even dream of. He's a God that's above all and everything is in his hand. I dare you to trust him because if you trust him, he will not fail. Amen. Looking unto Jesus. We need faith on fire because we're in a world on fire. And we need to trust God as never before. We're going to sing this hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Hymn number 110 is going to go up on the monitor in just a moment. If you're here today and you're not connected to Christ, please come. If you're here and you're not connected to his church, please come. We'd love to have you be a part of this fellowship. If you're here this morning, you know you're carrying some weight, some excuse, something that's dragging you down. We'd love to pray with you and say, Lord, give them the victory. Lord, let them know that you'll take them through. Lord, let them know that you'll never, you'll never, never, ever fail. Amen. Let's stand together and sing together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I cannot trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Son, 
solid place to stand as you live your life. You can stand on the promises of God. And by faith, you'll learn that he's able. By faith. We're going to sing that fourth stanza, and then we will pray. He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, Father, we come today, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a faithful God, a God who saves, a God who calls us out of darkness into the marvelous light, a God who is able to meet every need of our life, every physical, financial, and emotional, every need. Nothing is too hard for the Lord our God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to this altar this morning and just simply confess that we need you. We need you as never before. We need you, O oh God, to make a way. We need you, O oh God, to open the door. We need you, O oh God, to provide for your people. And Lord, we know that you are faithful. Help us, O oh God, just to trust you. Help us to keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, May we lay aside every weight in the sin so that we can persevere in the race that you set before us. Bless now each heart that's at the altar today. Let them leave in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to close this morning, again, we have this very special service this afternoon at 3.30. We uh, all are invited, all are welcome. And don't you bring it special? Bring it all you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Bernice is our community liaison. She helps us do stuff out in the community, and we're just delighted to work with her. And, We've had so many great times together. Thank you, and we're brother and sister King. We're delighted to see them this morning. All, all who are here, we thank God for your presence. You know, I've been looking at them saying, <laughs> brother and sister Jenkins, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I told y'all I was growing old. I've been looking at him. I said, that guy looks familiar. <laughs> If you brought an offering this morning, please, it's at the rear of the church. Just give as God has given to you. Again, see, da see uh, D Daniel, if you didn't get that, we need your email. We need, if you have an email, we need to capture your email. Anything else I need to announce this morning? From Kansas City, too. Cuz, it's good to see you. Thank you. Ernestine's grand, Ernestine? yes. Ernestine's granddaughter. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God,
and the communion of his Holy Spirit. Be with us all, both now and forever, and God's people said, Amen and Amen and Amen.